Hi there and welcome to a new video in which we are going to be checking out tile maps. Probably you have heard of them uh, before, we are going to be going over the main definition of them, how to use them, and this is a beginner friendly tutorial so we are, we are not going um, any deeper okay? In, in more advanced features, we are going to be focusing on how to set them up, how to use them for the basic usage, and basically the tile maps are the resource that we use in order to for example create this amazing stuff as a game developer okay so it's basically how we transform maybe a palette okay a tile palette of something like this to an actual playable level okay so let's start right away so first of all this is something that not a lot of people mention and it's super important for you to understand it's a super basic definition of what a what actually a tile map is so let me just use here a marker okay and we're going to be defining it in the following way so the tile map itself okay it's the file okay that we're going to be using that contains every single tile as you can see so this um, blue square or light blue square this is the actual tile map okay which, as you can see, is like the file containing itself every single tile. We'll get to tiles in just a second. So you can think um, as the tile map as the collection, okay, of the different tiles. That's the main definition of a tile map. And a tile map, okay, it's basically just one image file, okay, one image file in which the, there we have the collection of every single tile. And therefore, every single square, every single tile, however you want to call it, basically this one, this one, this one, etc. All those ones that are in red, they are called tiles. Okay? So now, which is the relationship, okay, if I were to ask you, between tiles and tile maps? And the answer would be that the tile map is the collection and inside of this collection of tile maps we have every single tile so every single tile is indeed contained inside of the tile map as you can see as you can check it right over there once we understand this it is much better uh, for us to understand how to actually take advantage of them so I just have here a completely empty go to the project and I have this time map okay downloaded from Kenny okay that uh, we also check this website out if you want to use it Kenny here you're going to find a lot of uh, time maps examples and in order to use time maps in Godot what we are going to be using right over here is a tile map layer Previously, in older Godot versions, and I'm not talking about versions like from one year ago, versions from maybe just a couple of months ago we had to use the tile map, okay? But what happens is that we have actually different tile map layers, and this is a concept we'll get into in a second. But right now, do not use the normal tile map node, but the tile map layer, because as you can see, this one is marked as deprecated. So it may be deleted soon, and it's not going to be having any kind of uh, new features or errors correction. So let's add there our tile map layer. So in order to start using our tile map, what we need to load in is our tile set okay so let's create a new tile set over there which as you can see the definition is the library for tile maps if you don't want to deal a lot with the definition you can think of this resource as the the thing that allow us to actually load in our tile map image okay so you can open it up and you have some extra settings and once you can see you have your tile map and your tile set once again, your tile set is where you load in your tile map. And the tile map is the place in which you are actually able to use your tile map, okay? I know it may have sounded a little bit confusing, but it is easy. Um, so let's basically just drag and drop this uh, tile map into this uh, blue square or rectangle, actually. And here we just press yes so that we can get started with this, okay? So... Now, the first thing that we see whenever we wanted to select any kind of tile is that we have this kind of orange box. This determines the tile that we are going to be selecting. But here, as you can see, there is something that is not working correctly. Because if I want to select the first tile, this one, okay, in this case, in this specific tile, it was correct. But in the case of this second tile map, for example, well, it doesn't seem to be correctly selected because there is some transparent area and also it is this part of the tile is being omitted 
Um, so this is not correct. And why does this happen? Because what we have is a texture region, okay? Which, as you can see, finds the size of each eye on the atlas in pixels. And it's also, as, as it says over there, in most cases, this should match the tile size defined in the tile map property. And I'll, I'll, as far as I know, you always have to match this texture region size with this tile size. So in this case, how exactly do you know your tile size? In most cases, it should be 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. There can also be other values. But right here, what it seems is that we don't have a problem of tile size because the first one is correctly selected. What we have the problem is that this tile map has some spacing in between. Okay, so how much spacing exactly? Let's just basically try out different values and see which values match. So for example, separation, in this case, what well, it's what we want. One, two, sorry, one and one, I wanted to say. And there, you can see everything works fine because there is basically one pixel that is being left in between every single tile. And you see, when you check with every single tile, everything does work, um, does look perfect, okay? And uh, if you are wondering what are margins, the easiest way to just apply this margin. So let's apply the margin of three and three. And this will, as you can see, just offset all the selection of tiles. So the origin of the tiles, rather of being on zero on zero, which would be here, are going to be in three to the X and three to the Y. But well, in this case, we don't really need these margins. And in lots of cases, you don't either need them. So once you can check that everything is done what you can see is that sometimes you have some tiles that are black don't ask me why some of these tiles are black i've never been able to understand that but what we have here is a message hold control to create multiple tiles hold shift to create big tiles so what we can do is to select the the tile of of the top okay and then hold down control from here and you will select all the areas so let's say all the tiles and so you can see there it's been like whitened so now we can actually use it okay you also have more options over here that we are not really going to be using at least for this simple video and once that we have our tile set uh, set which as you can see which as you remember is basically the resource that allows you to load your tile map and we can add something for in that definition the tile set is the resource that allows you to load in your tile map image and allows you to set the tile map image correctly in order for it to be able to be used. So now that we have our tile set set, what we can do is go back to the tile map section and here we can start paint. So for example, let's click on this green icon and we can start to paint. Okay, quite, quite simple. Okay, what we have is a problem now because these tile sets are super small. What you can do to make all these tiles bigger, go to the tile map layer, transform and scale them in. Something like maybe five, five would be more than enough in this case. Now, also you have lots of options, okay, uh, to, to paint with. So, for example, when well, you have the basic selection tool to basically select any of these, for example, or select a whole area and do whatever you want with this area. Now, for example, you can move it around. You have the paint tool, so you can select you know, this tile and start painting it around. We can also see that it's blurry, so you have to go to texture, filter, and nearest, by the way. Um, and then well, we have some tools, such as the line tool. Okay, we can paint lines. And if we hold down shift, they are going to be like completely straight lines. Uh, then we have also the rectangle tool, so it just creates like a filled in rectangle. Uh, we have the bucket tool, which does exactly that. We have like some kind of color picker, which would be, but it's a pick a, a tile picker. So if I click in this one, as you can see, I get selected this one. If I, if I click on this one, I get selected the grass, quite simple. I also have a, a options to rotate some tiles. And this one that is particularly interesting because it's to place a random tile. So let's say I will paint here a, um, a rectangle over here, okay, of grass. And let's say that I wanted to decorate this grass a little bit. I don't have to, for example, select this grass and paint around with it, maybe like this. Okay, and then with the flowers. No, you don't really have to do that. What you can do is just uh, use the place random tile, select the options. So basically you select one, hold down shift, and while holding down shift, you select, for example, this one. And so select these mushrooms. And these are the thing over here. And I don't know, these are the stuff over here also. And now whenever you want to paint, 
as you can see here you are going to be having like all the different tiles okay placed randomly so it does look quite quite interesting you will see that here it seems like it is an error but it's not an error it's just that well we don't have grass behind our decorations so this is going to be one of the next topics in the video to talk about tile map layers because well we have no grass and we just have decorations decorations but we should also have like the, the grass so we'll get to that in a second so as you can see this is called a tile map layer so it's just one layer of the tile map and what happens is that tile maps indeed can have layers so for example what you can have in your tile map is one layer okay so for example for the grass as we are going to be having for example a green rectangle so this is um layer l1 but on top of this grass you may want to have some decorations as we have seen i don't know we you may want to have like a flower let's say that that is well th that is a tree let's say uh, that, uh, let's say that we also want to have a uh, flowers well, we want to have some decorations. So this would be our layer 2, which would be displayed on top of layer 1. Okay, because if this layer was behind of layer 1, what we would end up having is this. So we would firstly draw the, the decorations. Okay, so something like this and something like this, for example. And on top of those decorations, we would draw our grass. So the decorations would be covered by the grass okay so that's obviously something that we don't want in this case so how exactly do we set this up first of all let's change the the scene structure and i will just right click here and i will just uh, change the root node if possible because i know here why Godot would not really allow me to do that um no it doesn't allow me to do that so i don't know why uh so let's actually delete this tile map layer and I will just create everything again, but with a 2D scene or no 2D as the root. So I will call this one tile map. And I will add once again the tile map layer. I will just use the shortcut control A to quickly add um, a tile map. And let me just quickly set this up again. I know I could have said the tile set resource and loaded the in again, but well, it is also quite simple and easy to, to do what we have done until now. 16, 16, 16, uh, separation 1, 1. And there we have it this one is dark so let's just click it and there we have it so in this case what we want to do with each tile map layer is just call it exactly like that so for example we want to have one tile map layer for our uh grass and another one for our decorations and another one for our houses for example these are of course just examples so let's grab our grass layer and what i will just do is grab the grass and i will just paint a super big rectangle but let's just do it first of all let's select all of them as you can see also i've created just copies of them using Control d let's scale them in something like five and now uh in the grass make sure that you have selected the corresponding layer you can also by the way here go to the next layer or to the previous layer so this is also quite quite useful i'm currently in grass rect and let's just paint here a giant rectangle covering all the screen and now let's go to the next one so now we are in decorations as you can see the 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 layer that we are not selecting is darkened so decorations and here we are going to be doing uh, what we have done before so let's go to the paint mode with the randomness selected hold it down shift i will select the different uh, decorations that we're going to be having this one um uh, this one this one this one this one and now I can directly go ahead and paint around. Okay, so there we have it. Let's continue painting around. You're going to hold down the click and as you can see, you will get a collection of, of decorations, basically. And as you can see, it is blurry once again. So let's just select the three of them. Go to uh, texture, filter, nearest. Okay, and as you can see, now we don't have that problem. Because if we actually hide these layers well the grass is still the grass just a green rectangle we can hide the grass and show the decorations and we only have the decorations and everything combined looks as we want it to look and in terms of the houses let me just super quickly go ahead and add some houses so uh let's for example i don't know grab this thing over here okay i don't really know how to paint these houses i should check the the tile map images but i believe it should be something like this like this, like this, like this, and like this. 
and then this one this one this one and this one right there and oops and these ones like there and using the eraser let me delete those so there we have some kind of, of house let's make it with this uh with that one and well there you can see like the final result of course this looks awful but we're able to understand everything we have a grass layer a decorations layer on top and a houses layer on top of it so for example the houses covers the decorations and if we were to change the the order of any of these layers of course it would really affect like how this is drawn because go to displays stuff um from top to bottom so first you go to draws the grass then the decorations then the houses uh so if we put the houses behind the decorations well this is what would happen and this case well it is a behavior that probably we don't want okay so that's why this is put here the same thing if we put the grass on top of everything we would not see anything um so well, this is like the most important stuff uh, of time maps. You can still add uh, collisions. You can still do like lots of other things. So if you really enjoy this tutorial, let me know in the comments down below and I will gladly create like a second version of it with even more information. And talking about learning Godot, what you're going to find in the description down below is access to my own Godot courses, okay? So if you really enjoy my explanations, if you think that you have learned a lot, make sure to check them. I have a complete course of Godot. In less than six hours, you create a completely functional prototype. So it's not those courses that are super long, maybe complicated to follow along if you are a complete beginner because they are a little bit overwhelming. Here, 5.5 total hours, you get your certificate and your prototype finished. And if you use the link in the description down below, you're going to be able to get it for a limited time at a huge discount. I believe it is going to be at something like $12. And you also have here some other courses that you can buy or even some courses that are completely free once again of Godot. Or if you like Unity, you also have your, your course here waiting for you. Once again, using the link down below, you're going to be having a huge discount at something like $12. So I will see you there and see you in the next one.